Hey everyone, today I just wanted to talk about why I chose the Fuji X-T3 as my go-to video camera for 2022. So this is the camera setup that I've been using professionally for the past three years for virtually all of my work. It is a Canon 5D Mark III with the Sigma 85mm 1.4 on it. This camera is a few generations old, but in terms of still photography and doing portrait work, it is an absolute powerhouse, even by today's standards. Especially if you pair it with a beautiful lens like this Sigma. Uh, if you guys are just starting out photography and you guys want to do portrait work, I highly, highly recommend something like an 85mm. If you can get it down to 1.4, um, you'll just see amazing results from your portrait work. Now the only problem with this camera is that the video capabilities are a bit subpar by today's standards. It'll only shoot up to 1080p and only to 30 frames a second. You also don't get autofocus in video mode, so trying to do anything regarding motion is just an extra level of difficulty added on top of that. So now I find myself in a predicament. I want to make the jump to 4K, but I want to maintain all my lenses and the quality that I've already gotten used to. The problem is, even Canon has changed their new mirrorless system and have changed their mount, so even my old lenses like this one are not going to be compatible with the new cameras. I will need to get an adapter or get all new lenses. So since I have to make the transition anyways and get an adapter even if I were to stick to Canon, I figured why not try out some other brands? I've been with Canon since the beginning of my photography career. Uh, and I've never tried anything else. Now, I was already familiar with Sony and their mirrorless systems. I was pretty much recommended Sony by a lot of people that I know, and they were saying that it's the easiest transition if you're a Canon user already. The only issue I found with Sony is the price. To get into a Sony 4K system, uh, like most of their A7 series, I was looking at a minimum of $1,500 for something decent on the used market, and that was just slightly over my budget. But that's when the name Fuji started coming up over and over again in all of my research. Now, I had heard of Fuji before from their film days uh, with their film stocks and film cameras and things like that, and I knew they were a reputable brand. I just was not familiar at all with their new system of mirrorless cameras or any of their digital platforms whatsoever. Now there were two major factors that went into play when I was choosing the X-T3 over some of the other options. Now first of all was price. I picked up the body for $750 and I picked up this lens which is an 18-55mm to 55 millimeter kit lens for Fuji and I picked that up for $300. Altogether my initial investment into this was only $1,050 which is really not bad for the features and the quality that I get with this camera. Second thing is the frames per second. I was looking at the X-T2 as another option, and when I was doing my research, I found out that the X-T2 actually shoots 4K to a limit of 30 frames a second, whereas the X-T3 can shoot 4K at 60 frames a second. Now, shooting 4K at 30 frames a second obviously is not that big of an issue, but for me, if I'm going to make the investment and make the jump into an entirely new system, I would rather have that extra option of 60 frames a second, since I'm probably going to end up going to that later in the future anyways. Now let's talk about how I found using the Fuji system after being a Canon user for nearly 10 years. So I absolutely have fallen in love with using this camera for shooting video. Um, I've had the camera for about a week now and it is so much lighter, so much easier to carry around. Right now I can hold it in one hand and not have to worry about my arm getting super tired. Overall usability is just far better than the Canon. Obviously this camera is not without its flaws. Um, battery life, I knew going into the mirrorless systems was notoriously low and burns through really quickly. Uh, thankfully I've managed to pick up a couple extra batteries for this camera. They were like $35 for the pair. Uh, they're not the branded Fuji ones, but they work just fine. The second issue that I have with this camera is with the screen. Now, don't get me wrong, the screen is a great high resolution screen. I can tell what's in focus all the time. Um, the colors look great. My only problem with it is that it doesn't flip out all the way. Uh, I know that's kind of a big complaint with these cameras and I've heard it before. Trust me, I love the fact that the screen flips out at all, uh, unlike my Canon, which is just locked in there. Uh, but I still feel like they could have easily just made the screen flip out all the way so that I could see myself right now while I'm recording and not just kind of guess what my framing is. Now, what about those lenses that I had on my Canon system? 
obviously that was a concern of mine that I still wanted to be able to use those lenses on a new system and get that sharp Sigma quality on a 4K video. So this is the adapter by Earth. Um, they create these adapters for basically every possible combination of camera body and lens that you could ask for. I absolutely love this. Uh, it obviously doesn't have any electronic communication going on. There's no uh, electronic in this whatsoever. It is strictly just a mount adapter for Fuji bodies to Canon lenses. Since this doesn't have any electronic communication, I do not get autofocus with my Canon lenses, and they're also going to be forced to shoot at wide open since I'm not able to manually control the aperture. This thankfully is not a big issue for me, seeing as my Canon system couldn't shoot autofocus anyways, and I'm pretty much only going to be using my Sigma lenses for some more artsy B-roll and things like that. So shooting wide open is perfectly acceptable for me. Um, if I'm going to not shoot wide open, I might as well just use the Fuji lenses that I'm provided with. Now obviously there's a lot more information and features on this camera that I can go into for hours and hours on. Uh, thankfully, YouTube has plenty of resources to figure out that information. Um, plenty of people have done videos on this camera. That's where I've done all my research on, uh, as well as some of the camera websites like VNH Photo, DP Review, and things like that. I mainly wanted to go over my personal experience and why I chose this camera and hopefully for other people out there that either don't have a camera and they want to go into shooting video and don't know where to start or if you are like me and you already had a pre-existing system but you need to transition into the new systems and new mounts and things like that then hopefully this video can help you make that decision obviously some of the features might not be for everybody and you'll have to choose that for yourself but this camera for me has been working absolutely amazingly and I'm very excited to continue using it and making more videos in the future. Anyways guys, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like and if you wanna see more content to come, then please feel free to hit the subscribe button as I'm going to be making plenty more videos now that I have this system completely up and running and I'm very familiar with it. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and enjoy some juicy B-roll.